So today I want to talk to you about Spento Idol and uh, some, some issues. So um, in Linaro we have been trying to promote uh, Spento Idol to our, our members, our vendors, and to move from Spento Ram to Spento Idol. And I think that has been pretty successful. A lot of our, our members has started looking into this and, co and converting to use this. Uh, so uh, now I'm not just only talking about um, uh, enabling Suspento Idol, but actually um, adding support for the deeper state also, which is yeah, the, the, it's comparable to the one that we're using for Suspend to RAM. Uh, which makes it slightly more difficult, and uh, there are some issues around this. Um, the issues I'm going to talk about to, today, and I want to discuss with you, is not the one that's on the Linux side, but rather on on um, on the firmware side of things. So, um, as uh, Saravana just told you, there is a, a bunch of old firmwares out there that doesn't support suspend to idle, but only suspend to RAM. And uh, we have been playing and exploring with, with some ideas of how we could uh, make use of those um, um, yeah, legacy interfaces for hot plug uh, to support those deep raw states. So that is exactly what, uh, what I wanted to talk to you about here. So the idea is to use the suspend to idle uh, loop and path, uh, but rather than actually uh, calling those uh, APIs to suspend the CPU, uh, we are thinking of using the, the yeah, CPU offline um, um, interface to the firmware to, uh, to put, the, put the CPUs into those deeper states. Um, while doing this, obviously, there is a whole bunch of, of uh, constraints that we need to <laughs> fulfill. So we're, we're trying to take advantage of, of the benefits of not actually powering off the CPU uh, from the Linux point of view only from the firmware point of view. So, and we will obviously hit a bunch of, 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 uh, of scenarios and cases where we need to be careful from, from the Linux point of view. For example, we don't want an IPI to be fired to, to a CPU that's been offline from a uh, firmware, firmware point of view. So these are a couple of, of, of uh, problems that I've uh, well, yeah, just, just discovered by thinking a little, a little bit about this. So th this is just a very uh, high-level idea that I want to, to pitch with you. Uh, so there's no code, there's no patches uh, at all written for this. So this is just a, pl a simple idea that I wanted to put out there. So yeah, uh, for example, we need to move to, to the boot CPU, and uh, that one needs to, yeah, a similar pattern as we have for suspend run. The boot needs to the boot CPU needs to be the last one, and the boot CPU needs to be one that actually wakes up the other CPUs. Uh, additionally, we will have to save and restore the CPU state to be able to um, continue running uh, from, the, from the idle pass. We need an entry point to, to resume from, from, from for, for each of those CPUs. Um, yeah, that's, that's a couple of things that I've, I've uh, realized. So, yeah, what's, what's your thought about uh, this idea? Is it uh, completely crazy? Or uh, do you think it's something that can work? Uh, can it be useful for x86 old, old platforms too? Uh, so you don't need to. For x86, you actually can do a... You mean the, the ones that don't, the, don't, don't have like C10 maybe? or So we don't care about them too much. Uh, the, also, suspend around works there, so it's not like we could. Yeah, uh, but the, I think that the CPU hot plug is too much for this use case. So we don't need to. You, you don't need uh, to do everything that CPU offline does uh, in order to. Uh, to just leave the CPU in a in the idle state, um. I mean, I think to clarify what I think is Wolf's point, he knows he's not saying we should call the CPU offline. We just directly call the firmware to turn off the CPUs, so you skip all those steps. That's almost like a deeper idle state in some sense. 
Yes, it is. But you need to be careful about, you need to save all the state, the relevant state, right? But, and the CPU hot plugs do that. But you, you, you just need those CPU hot plug callbacks that save the relevant state, and you don't need uh, some, some other CPU hot plug callbacks, uh, which, I don't know, move away, like migrate proce processes out of the CPU going offline, you don't need that. Okay. One, one thing I was thinking of was the IPIs, for example. So assume that we have four CPUs and one of those CPUs uh, goes into the suspend to idle loop and you, from the firmware point of view, you will put it offline, but from the Linux point of view, it's online. It's only suspended. And so theoretically, you could actually send an IPI for another CPU to wake this CPU up. Uh, but it's firmware-wise offline. So what will happen in that situation? Who's on? I was just going to say, I think you have that same problem for any interrupt, right? Any interrupt that's won't be received if the firmware thinks the CPU is, is offline, it probably turned off the interrupt controller. Yeah. So you also need to migrate all interrupts away, yeah. not just the IPI, but all interrupts away from that CPU. Yeah. But at least for ARM, that's already almost what we are doing. I mean, when the CPU goes to, to its deepest idle state is off, and you have to take care of, at least on the, on the geek interface, to make sure that either you will wake up the CPU or you will redirect that to something else. So I don't see that as a major problem by itself. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that should be okay. In worst case, you, you will have to wake up the CPU and go back. I assume you're talking about like, when you refer firmware, it's the PSEI? Or do yeah, yeah. so I, I'm mostly looking at this from, from the ARM64 and PCI. Okay, so basically so you want to call PSCI CPU off mm -hmm. instead of, like, do we, have we checked, the, do we meet the criteria? So we end up, we might end up that the firmware keeps rejecting the call because we have not met the criteria of in this uh, scenario. Like... No, in the state when, in the basically, you'll be making this call in the uh, idle thread. Whether that meets the all the criteria for CPU off is what I'm like. I I don't remember all the details, but yeah, that's my main concern. Yeah. Uh, I think his goal is instead of using the idle PSCI CPU suspend, suspend he want to use the PSCI CPU off, yes. Yes, yeah. And because of, if I remember cor correctly, in the PSCI at the end, both functions are ending in the same internal local function. Just the state yeah. index is not the same. So we are doing the same at the end from a pure power point of view or low level point of view. Now there is all these criteria when you accept or reject the, the things. but. Uh, I can assume that, yes, if you call CPU off, uh, like, uh, yeah. yes, CPU off instead of CPU suspend, that so, should be accepted. It's a pure, poor thing. So from, from the firmware? From, it's, a pure, it, it's a pure hardware um, um, question. Um, uh, let's assume if we had done as 2 it's going to work, it would, it would have succeeded suspending, right? We're just in the same situation. Yeah. Instead of going through all the next steps of s we're going to go through all the S2I steps of the Linux. So from, from really from a firmware perspective, it's, it's the exact, exact same criteria that's being called in. The main difference is what you allow to wake it up, whether it's IPIs or every other interrupt in the system, that's really the criteria, right? So you still have to do some masking or some IRQ affinity stuff. You, Yeah. Well, that depends. That's platform specific, right? 
some IRQs are like when the git when the git goes off, most of these most of these devices have some other little block that's actually going to do wake up IRQs and then reroute them to the git, right? And that can be platform specific depending on the state that's chosen. Yeah, that would be the same to S to RAM, yeah, for, for today. And then for S to idle, also turn every input can wake up. Every still select, you can turn from A to R. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the, the same people have to do the same between S and RAM to test the other stuff. For the devices, it is, but not for the CPUs. That's. Like this. Sorry. Now, in this case, that's why the goal is really to not Linux CPU out plug. But at the end, we, we, yeah. we call that. So it's a pure software point of view and from a it's system more, point of view. Lying to the kernel. Too. Sorry? We're yeah. Lying to the kernel is the goal. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I guess. Can, we can do that there. Thanks. Uh, you can do less work there because, in, in principle, you don't need all the CPU hot plug uh, overhead. Like migrating threads again, right? So, yeah. yeah, then, but, but, you know, from the electrical, you know, electrical and uh, setup standpoint, it's exactly the same as I spent yeah. around. Yeah. In this. <laughs> it depends on how it looks like, I guess. <laughs> So what I'm trying, I'm still trying to get a, my head around like the beginning, the problem statement. Like, what's is the root cause of is the root problem here? That just that CPU hot plugging is just too slow. Uh, so so the 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 root uh, well the goal is that you want to quick up the suspend resume cycle. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. And the benefit that suspend to idle gives you uh, compared to suspend RAM, we all know about that. Yes. Yeah. So. If you have an old firmware that only supports suspend to RAM, the, the legacy way of doing things, how can we, uh, 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 okay. how can we like trick that uh, firmware? Ah, uh, right. So, okay. So, so we don't okay, have to. Okay. So it, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I'm I should now, set I'm up. Yeah, yeah. Good. Is okay. that only so one slide? Is it? Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. This is it. So nobody's going to be like the stupid idea. Don't submit the patch. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So I think my, my concern uh, is the the way the code, the way how the code would look to manage this, because we don't want a platform hacks in there, and we don't. Yeah, it should be upstreamable code, and that's kind of my uh, concern at this moment. But uh, let's see how it looks like and uh, explore it. It sounds it sounds like it's worth exploring, and that was uh, well nice to hear. Another thing that we need to dis or not discuss, but as part of this, is how do we make sure that pe when people are implementing firmware for n you know current chips, how do we make sure they do it right so this isn't a problem, right? Uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah. As a, as a, yeah. yeah. So we, <laughs> we have been. I mean, obviously, uh, our role at Linaro is to try to convince yeah. our members to do the right things, and so what we've been telling them for several years that please move to suspend to idle. It's it's a good thing. And some of them has obviously been listening, uh, and not everyone. Most of them do, but even if most of the high premium tier end up doing, there's still enough of uh, not the highest end SOCs that are there that probably don't care about this, but they can still benefit from it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs>